Hi, welcome to Informatica support videos. It's me, Bala Murugan, uh, from Informatica Global Customer Support. Uh, in this video, we are going to see the EGP configuration for Swift API calls in JBoss, and this is for Informatica MDM MD971 version. And this is the agenda today, uh, overview of transactions and EGP site in client usage in Swift API, and we can have a quick code, code demo on this particular topic. Okay, so what is transaction in our overview like? Uh, there are a set of procedures or the operations that you want to perform on the MDM hub. Like it, it must complete all the operations or the procedures without generating any errors to be a successful transaction. Let's say you want to perform a put request and also get and then you want to tokenize something and merge or unmerge, those kind of all the operations, you can do it in a certain transaction. You, you want to do it in a certain way, you want to perform. So there is an option to roll back if there is any exception or any error occurs. So there is a way you can roll back all those transactions and in that particular way is a usage of EJP. And one more thing you, you may need to note down here is you cannot use transactions in a web service. And for that, uh, Informatica MDM provides an EJP Cyprian client to communicate with the hub server using EJP as a protocol. There are three protocols we are supporting. One is EJP, and one is HTTP, and one is SOAP. So, so what's the usage of uh, EJP? So usage, it supports transactions, it's uh, get a better performance than HTTP or SOAP uh, by serializing the request object instead of using the XML because the HTTP and SOAP protocol it uses XML as a transferring protocol. I mean, uh, tra transferring mechanism. But here it will serialize all those request objects, and this also supports um, JTA, uh, Java Transaction API and container managed persistence. So you don't need to write your own connection to persist anything. So Informatica MDM hub will provide the container managed persistence. So it will provide the EJP uh, in a certain way that you can use it like a container managed persistence. And if you are not using any transactions in in your uh, uh, SOAP SIF calls, uh, in that way it will as simple as like HTTP or SOAP is used. So if you're not using any transaction, then it will be applied like HTTP or SOAP is. So it will it will use its own autonomous transaction. So every request, let's say if you're calling a put request, so it will create one transaction and it will commit it. Uh, so it will persist in the database. But if you are using a transaction, it will uses its own transaction instead of uh, this autonomous transaction on each calls. So if the transaction support is needed, then what you need to do? Uh, Informatica EMDM hub EJP uses transactions with JTS. JTS is nothing but the Java transaction service. It, it, it's, it's available in all the application server which uh, supports EMDM like uh, Logic, Sphere, and JBoss. In this uh, video, I'm going to demo you on how to configure it for the JBoss EAP 6.1. And, and Informatica MDM Hub EJP is configured with transaction attribute is required, which means that if there is any external transaction started, let's say if in your EJP code uh, you want to use the external transaction, and you can use that actually. If it is if it is other transaction attribute, then you cannot use like this. But if it is a required, then you need to use that, and you can uh, use I mean uh, create it on your own. If there is no transaction, then uh, MDM Hub will use its own impl implicit transaction. So each and every SIF calls, I mean SIF requests, it will have a different transactions di differently. So if you want to see what is a transaction attribute type, you can you can see like a, for each and every request dot get a transaction attribute type, so that you can see what is a transaction attribute type for that particular SIF call. And we strongly recommend to uh, write against uh, 
explicit transaction code if it can be avoided because uh, our JTV or EJP specification supports container managed manage transaction so that explicit coding is not required. So you can use our own EJP with uh, container managed transactions. And what are the things you need to follow when you are uh, going for EJP as a protocol? So these are the setup things you can configure it as a client client properties. Like this is a uh, protocol. Uh, there are three options I told, right? There is a HTTP, SOAP, and EJP. So here you want to use EJP, and what is the ORS ID which you want to connect to in the hub, and username and password, and this provider URL. This is for uh, was specific. So this is a naming provider URL. I, I have given my uh, remote colon and the host name with the uh, triple four seven as a default host port, and the factory initial and packages and uh, EJP. These are the uh, you know uh, getting the context of uh, particular JBoss uh, server. I mean, uh, and one more thing, this JBoss node name. I have started my JBoss node with this particular name. If you are a cluster, you you might have uh, two different uh, nodes, so you can use either of them. And in a Java code, what you can do, you can create your SIP client, that is a Cyperin client, with EJP Cyperin client. You need to cast it to EJP Cyperin client with the properties file, what you have created. And once you have created, and you can get the transaction using EJP client class. So this is the class, I mean, the client code class, uh, which will get you the user transaction. Once you have a transaction that begins, then you can write your own SIP calls. Like uh, you want to put some value to MDM hub, and once it is uh, successfully um, executed, then you, you want to do some merge or unmerge. So these many SIP calls you can call in like uh, how the business requirement is. So you can do that, and you can do transaction commit at the beginning if there is no error. So you can have some flag in between so that if there is any error catch up, then you, you don't need to commit it, so you have to roll back. So if there is any exceptions, then you can give a transaction dot rollback so that all the transactions will be rolled back, like uh, nothing will be committed into a database. So uh, that, that particular piece of uh, business logic will be saved and uh, database will not be persisted here. Let me show you the quick demo on this. So I have written a code, uh, like uh, this is a client uh, class I've written. And in this one, I am using test ejb.properties as my Cyprian client property file. So I want to load that file. So what are the things I need to do? Here I have specified. So this file has uh, web logic and uh, uh, web sphere configurations also. So I have just commented out. And I'm just using uh, only the part of uh, property which needs for JBoss. And here, ORS ID, your username and password, and where it needs to connect to. And the protocol, it's EJP here. And the rest all I have explained in the slides itself. And here, I've created the Cyprian client with this EJP Cyprian client as my casting Cyprian client class. So that this Cyprian client object itself like act like a EJB Cyprian client and then uh, this one transaction so user transaction how I can get it the user transaction EJB client is a class which comes from JBoss or the JBoss EJB dot client dot EJB client so that you can get a user transaction so you want to use a transaction that that supports the JTS. JTS is available in your JBoss, and once you use that, I mean, get user transaction. It will use particular nodes. Trans, I mean, user transaction. So once you have this user transaction, and you can set the transaction timeout, how much time it needs to wait for, and then you can say transaction that begin, and you can write your own custom code as per the business logic. I have written a put request call here. I'm just uh, creating put request uh, objects with this. What, what's the particular uh, value I want to update here? And 
here. Yeah. Once it is done, put response is completed, then I am just getting the messages. And you can do your uh, logic also. Like uh, if there is any failures, then you can roll back here. So you can do your logic here. And you can check the status also, transaction.get status. If there is any errors or something, then uh, there will be a status change. And transaction.commit will commit the changes to a database. And what all the things you have performed here, let's say put request, it will do the commit only if you do transaction.commit. So if there is any exception, I'm just uh, roll back so that uh, nothing will be uh, persisted in my database. Okay, so that was from my side. And you, if you want to go through uh, how to configure and what are the things you want to uh, look into for uh, SIF calls, so for that you can refer services integration framework guide for 971. And also uh, when you are doing a, uh, when you are using the transactions using UJP protocol, don't uh, necessarily decrease the performance. I mean, if you are if you are loading up with a lot of SIG requests and um, and using the transaction and the wait time will be more and uh, you need to concentrate on your business logic and effective write, writing the usage of uh, transactions so that uh, you will get a good performance in the execution. We would love to hear a feedback from you about this video. Uh, you can send a mail to support videos at informatica.com or you can follow us on Twitter with the Infra support as a handle. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day. Bye.